So welcome <coughs> welcome guys sa uh, stream na to. Kung saan mabibigay ako guys ng top 6 laptops for under 30k sa Lazada deal. So there is actually one comment sa comment section natin mga kaibigan. And ito na yung time na gagawin ko na to in style na magla-live na lang tayo. Kasi when it comes to it, yes, uh, sabi ni Gabriel Ivan Villian, Hi, when restocks ng ibang laptops ito, mostly di avail eh. Face out na, na po ba yan yung iba? Planning to buy kasi on 66 sale, pero baka may mas mura na bago. Okay. Um, to explain kasi, meron tayong mga laptops that is really quite okay for gaming and all productivity. Ang problem kasi natin ngayon is because of the semiconductor shortage. Because semiconductor is the one that produces already consumer electronics, lalo na ang laptops, even cars. So, for this episode guys, ang mabibigay ko lang muna is yung top 6 kasi ang gusto kong ipakita sa inyo kung ano talaga yung pinaka-beneficial sa budget nyo. So, unang-una sa lahat is si Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 3. Uh, it is a 14-inch laptop pero napapansin ko dito kasi sa mga ganitong laptop, yung plastic build quality niya is really good. Uh, upgradeability niya is somewhat okay. Um, some other laptops kasi meron tayong mga 4 gig onboard memory. Which gives me the question, bakit may mga ganun norms, bakit wala bang mga mas better na memory module? <clears throat> well, to give you guys a research kasi kung ano yung expectation dito sa IdeaPad Slim. For 24999 that is actually a really good laptop. Kung mapapansin nyo kasi, si Ryzen 3 3250U processor is very compelling pagdating sa productivity, lalo, lalo, lalo na when it comes to basic Photoshop work, basic video editing gamit na Premiere lalo na yung kanyang uh, dedicated graphics ay integrated graphics card so it's Vega graphics, hindi siya dedicated so kung makikita natin ang presyo ng IdeaPad Slim guys, is that the cost kay Vilman kasi is around 22995 ngayon and the reason why I do actually like this laptop is because kahit sleeker siya, it kinda looks like the Lenovo Gaming 5i 3i. Kasi ang purpose nito is more importantly a thin and light type of laptop. Hindi siya ultrabook. But yes, you can see right here na soldered po ang kanyang 4GB memory. So 2400MHz. And the only thing that you can upgrade is the memory up to let's say 20 gigabytes 2400 megahertz ram you can use different speeds pero i'm not sure kung mamimisbehave ang laptops kasi meron some some laptops they can crash on blue screen screen of death and hindi nyo talaga to ma-upgrade uh, it has two cores and four threads and goes from its base clock of 2.6 to 3.5 gigahertz turbo core for megs of cash yung level 3 niya, meron kasing level 2 which is 2 meg or 3 megs. Maganda kasi dito is that even though it is an SOC, it is considered APU. Ang APU kasi kinocombine ng CPU and GPU in one link to accelerate processes lalo lalo na sa mga applications natin because si graphics card considered graphics card na rin kasi siya pagdating sa integrated segment. Although, yes, it is a shared memory, yun ang downside ko pagdating sa AMD is because minsan yung 4 gig kinakain niya mismo yung shared memory. So, nababawasan yung memory nyo yung 4 gig Kaya, nirecommend lagi ang 8GB dito. <coughs> the speakers on this thing though, uh, na-test ko na yung speakers sa mga Lenovo Gaming 3. It kinda shares the same philosophy on this thing na medyo okay lang yung kanyang sound. Um, hindi siya masyadong super bassy but I could say that this is actually quite okay for the price point 35 watt hour battery which is promising for a laptop and reasonable despite ULB ang kanyang processor or ultra low voltage kaya may U tayong suffix so norms may tanong ako ano bang difference ng AMD 3 3250U sa susunod nating number but first things first, bigyan ko kayo kung ano yung 
specification niya talaga sa kanyang processor side. So, nandito tayo kay notebookcheck.net which is one of the sources that you need to research lalo na sa mga game performance niya. So, it uses a Vega 3 graphics with 192 shader cores. So, <clears throat> 1200 MHz pero ang kanyang memory niya is quite okay. 12 nanometer process, 15 watts of TDP. So ang TDP is to actually the performance on the laptop when it comes to heat and speed. Kasi makakaiba siya speed and performance. Kasi pag mababa yung TDP mo is that the performance will decrease. But the more efficient the battery life, the more efficient the processor to run on a sleeker, slimmer chassis. 12 nanometer. So, it still uses the AM4 socket which is BGA or ball grid array. Ang ibig natin sabihin sa ball grid array guys is that it is really quite slow to be said para magets nyo. Soldered on board po siya. Kind of similar to the 4 gig of RAM na, na discuss natin kanina sa Lenovo. And the Vega 3, you can only expect to <coughs> say na may pagka-similarity siya sa sabihin na natin, yun. Nakikita nyo, that is the 8550G and 8750M dual graphics. So, it's not really the most powerful kumpara kay Intel UHD 630 kung gumagamit kayo ng H processor ng Intel. And you can expect when it comes to games kasi, uh, the reason why we recommend 8 gigs. Kasi, yeah, outsiders, it is not really a comparable setting as what you can expect. Kung makikita nyo kung ano yung performance niya. Yan, kay HP 255G7 kasi, is that yung max na is 57. So, makikita nyo itong mga to, 0.1%, 0.01. Ito yung nagdi-deep down yung frames. Kung nag-frame skip siya, that means... Ito yung dapat yung hanapin, hindi yung max FPS. Ang um, pinaka the best dito is the average at saka itong mga lows. Kasi ang lows that will be expected na ang gaming performance niya is becoming stable. So makikita nyo, sa the games that will support the AMD Ryzen 3 sa Lenovo na to is some of the games na you can see right here on different resolutions of course it's not really ideal if you want to play games on a higher basis but I'm not sure with Valorant pero kaya naman yung Valorant on low settings so for $24,999 you don't have any kind of problems for the price although TN panel is screen nya sa mga taong hindi nakakalam kung ano yung types of panel TN is really obvious for a budget laptop Pag tinitit nyo yung angle niya, magkukan siya, magiging wash out ang colors. Though it's anti-glare that you can use this one outdoors, pero yung kanyang IPS, sabi na natin, kung may IPS kayong display, it is 10 times better compared to TN. Although, meron tayong OLED, meron din tayong mini LED, which is a new technology na hindi pa common sa mga laptops and it's really quite expensive to make 512GB SSD which is this one guys is NVMe so hindi nyo na pwedeng i-upgrade to sa mga SATA 3 base SSD dahil ang problema sa mga laptops na modern ngayon is that ang iso support lang nya guys is the NVMe SSDs lalo na sa mga 10th gen CPU and you can tell magandang review nya do. Though, mapabahas. Nababasa ko naman. Ang kaso, um, to my experience kasi dito sa laptop na to, yes, first things first, the keyboard is really good. Um, wala akong problema dito. The up and down arrow keys is crap because, of course, you need to sacrifice some of it. I wish that Lenovo would separate the arrow keys a little bit more like traditional keyboard na nakikita natin sa mga keyboard sa PC na naka-separate. But, it's no problem at all. Um, napapansin ko mga port selection niya. You have SD card reader, combo audio jack, yung mga 3 USB ports niya, HDMI, and DC power in. Wala po siyang full-size card reader. Meron. Ayun. Wala siyang USB Type-C. Yun lang yung napapansin ko dito sa laptop na to. But, because of its sleekness, 
hindi siya actually a bad idea. Which you go to number 2 which is the Asus X409JA. Uh, si X409 kinda shares the same philosophy sa memory na soldered onboard siya na pwede nyo i-upgrade sa 20GB. But this one is the Intel Core i3 100G51. Ang si Intel Core i3 naman, kung yung search natin dito kay notebookcheck.net which this is the best source if kung gusto niyo makita or malaman ang performance ng processor to give you guys the idea or the bright idea kung paano siya nagpo-perform. And because yung mga ginagawa kong top 10 laptops under 30k for gaming, mga yun. Actually, magka, di, actually yan yung name niya eh. 1005G1 dapat to. Or am I wrong? <laughs> Ayun. See? Tama ako. So, it is an Ice Lake processor. Um, it still uses the for 10 nanometer process. Pero, mapapansin nyo dito, ang clock rate niya is 1.2 GHz. So, ang baba na naman norms. Bakit ganun? Uh, to explain kasi, ULV processor pa rin siya. Ito, Ice Lake U, ang codename niya. Kung nakikita nyo tong U or G series ngayon sa Intel, it is actually meant for a lower TDP. Kaya mapapansin nyo 15 watts ang kanyang power. It's still 2 cores for threads, 4 megs of cache. But it can turbo boost to 3.4 GHz, which is more comparable to an i7 7 Gen ULV. Ayan. Comparable to sa ganitong processor. So makikita nyo yung 8145U may clock capability siya and the i7. Kasi si Gen 11, yung G1, makikita nyo yung performance niya medyo maganda rin siya. Uh, 10 nanometer process Intel Ice Lake graphics. Uh, though it is released back in 2019 ng processor na to, but these are common in terms of laptops sa 2020 2021, 2020 2021, which is slightly comparable to the 8250U processor. So makikita nyo guys, si 2500U is 1% slower kumpara dito, uh, which is good. Kasi regardless sa mga laptop sa ganitong processor, ULV pa rin siya. But it can actually perform very well, lalo na sa online teaching. Kasi sa mga games na ganito, you can tell na maganda yung score niya pagdating sa performance ng i3. Um, you can tell that the G1 is almost comparable. Yes, almost comparable siya sa mga... Sabi na, old Irish 640, okay. So, which is comparable to the <coughs> 620. Pero, sl higher, slightly faster siya kumpara kay GT740M. And, it is comparable to the MX130, which is okay for an entry-level gaming kasi, yun naman ang purpose niya. So, mapapansin nyo si Outsiders, it has a really respectable frame rate since, uh, Ano siya eh, in favor of Intel processors. So, mapapansin nyo, uh, medyo okay naman ng performance niya sa mga taong mahilig sa 2K something. And, medyo okay lang yung kanyang performance pagdating sa gaming. And, this is the source na kailangan nyo makita pagdating sa mga laptops. And, that will be dependent on the cooling and also the differences when it comes to this. For 25995 it is a good laptop. The best here is the 512GB NVMe SSD, 14-inch display, which is good. Maganda yung i3. Uh, I'm not really disappointed when it comes to the performance of Intel though. Uh, yun lang, actually, mas maganda ang Ryzen despite the cores and despite its nanometer kumpara kay Intel. At least, medyo bumabalik na konti si Intel sa performance segment sa mobile sector. So, moving on to the next one, this is the laptop na medyo okay siya, si my Ben Ben laptop, my book M543. Si M543 kasi uses the later generation 4300 yung kumpara kay 3rd gen, uh, 3rd gen Ryzen. So, mapapansin nyo si 4300U, kung isa-search natin dito sa notebookcheck.net, which is a great source, like I said, 
kung saan pwede kayong kumuha ng magandang outcome. So, it is based sa mga tin and light laptops to. Um, ang kagandahan dito though is that it can go up to 3.7 gigahertz, still 4 cores for thread, 6 megs of cache with Vega 5. So, comparable siya guys sa uh, site is lower sa 3750H. So, mas lower ang Ryzen 7 dito by 2%. Pero katumbas niya si Intel Core i5-1035G4 which is which is a leap forward for a Ryzen 3 processor kasi makaka-expect kayo ng editing, mga ganun. May kita yung lahat ng numbers ito and this is no joke kasi 7 nanometer siya based on TSMC which is TMC, TSMC is actually based on chip manufacturers na nabibigay na pro-provide sila ng processors to Apple yung mga Apple MacBook Pro M1 MacBook Air M1 pati yung iMac na M1 na processor pati yung iPad which this is actually the same basis sa TSMC and maganda kasi si TSMC pagdating sa mga processor and of course TSMC is based on Taiwan and the Ryzen Vega RX Vega 5 is actually quite similar to the R9M280X. So, mas lower siya sa GTX 1050 Max-Q. Pero mas mataas siya kumpara kay 660M at saka yung mga RX 640. So, expect to play games on a decent frame rate. Yan ang ng Gears Tactics dito, Hunt Showdown which is okay. So, makikita nyo, medyo tumataas tayo, gumaganda yung performance. At, at least some of it are favorable for AMD. Kung ito talaga yung balak nyo na gaming laptop or budget laptop for rendering video editing. Ang difference to kaya nag-live tayo is because ito for a day sale, 27,654 siya. 28,186 ang kanyang totong presyo. But depending on the configuration and of course the stock, you can have different options like this one which is the 8GB 256GB NVMe SSD and a 1TB hard drive. Meron din tayong 24880 which is good for a laptop in this kind of category. Um, pinaka base model guys is the 8GB 240GB SSD. Yan, medyo tumataas tayo ng presyo but this is actually quite reasonable for a laptop 256 na may 1 terabyte. Um, kung gusto niyo talaga mambam up ng content, which is okay. Yan, 16 gig to eh. Tapos, saron din tayo mga 8 gig. Yan yung mga specification na may kita dito. That will give you the best bang for the buck. Kasi, ang ni-recommend usually pag ako is mag-go kayo sa dual storage rather than single storage ko SSD because dual storage 1 terabyte hard drive can actually give you really great expectations sa pagsisave ng mga files nyo which going on to the next may ben ben kinda looks like Xiaomi guys is that it uses the Pentium 4415U uh, the only thing that I do actually say na ginawa sa nila ng 5030 ng Intel Pentium Silver ay yung Intel Pentium Silver kasi based on my experience sa uh, Acer Spire A314 na i-upload ko soon is that for student based laptop it is very good when it comes to its performance kumpara dito si Intel Pentium is binabase actually sa SOC eh, si Gold 4415U so mapapansin nyo medyo may pagka similarity siya sa SOCs um, this one ultra low voltage siya based on KB Lake which is <laughs> similar performance siya sa mga processor na ganito yung Pentium Gold 2.3 GHz clock rate yun na lang ang kanyang base clock wala siyang turbo boost uh, 2 cores 4 threads to mix of cache 14 nanometer 15 watts pa rin, but uses the Intel HD610 
However, ginagamit niya is 940MX 1GB which is okay for gaming pero yung VRAM kasi uh, hindi siya masyadong common na laptop processor dito but just to give you an idea it is really quite comparable to let's say yung 7100 US of course medyo may pagka similar siya yun nga lang maliit lang yung kanyang cache um ang downside kasi ng Pentium is that hindi siya masyadong ayun hyper threading pero wala siyang turbo boost yun yung downside kay Pentium 44 15U yung Pentium Gold but it gives you the best performance also despite the price on the my Ben Ben laptop Xiaomi 5 um Maganda nga yung specs, uh, DDR4 RAM with SATA and HDD. Yun nga lang, you're sacrificing your performance kasi pagdating sa gaming laptop ng ganitong presyo. Because the Pentium processor is not really that too powerful na medyo okay lang siya. Sayang, out of stock yung iba eh. Ayun, may option dito which is the 28700 kung gusto nyong mag-aim but ito yung pinaka viable option si 940MX 16GB RAM to 40GB SSD with 1TB hard drive silver color pero slim looking laptop lang siya so if you're really aiming for a gaming laptop I would suggest adding your budget a little bit better um, mas nirecommend ko talaga yung mga upcoming laptops like the RTX 3050 Ti RTX 3050 based laptops na maganda ang performance niya kung entry level ang gusto niyong laptop pagdating sa RTX for GTX yung mga 1650 Ti yun yung mga ni ko minsan but once we go on to the next one this is the Del Bostro 3405 um, this is a full HD laptop which is really good when it comes to performance 29495 for the 8GB which I do highly recommend 256 NVMe SSD which is okay kung gusto niyo pa ng more storage you can do some upgrades on this what's really good about this laptop because even though this Vega 8 ang makikita ko dito is that kinda similar dun sa sinabi ko kanina sa Ryzen 3 3500U okay lang kanyang performance uh, sa gaming pero don't expect too much pagdating sa high frame rate kasi you're using this laptop for a different purpose to 56GB NVMe SSD 4 gigs of RAM pero 8GB yung option dito uh, full HD display with a non-backlit keyboard 3 cell 42 watt hour sa mga nagtatanong kung backlit keyboard to actually some of the laptops are some of the laptops aren't backlit keyboard okay lang yung mga ganun but like said if you're aiming for budget kasi may mga stuffs na hindi talaga afford ang backlit keyboard so makikita nyo ang per selection niya is that meron lang siyang HDMI wala siyang VGA at least you have Ethernet port pero it lacks USB Type-C still bezel niya medyo okay ng konti hindi masyadong narrow as what you can expect for this kind of laptop which is okay um, plastic build quality pa rin Hindi ko lang alam kay may Ben Ben kasi first time ko lang nakikita tong brand na to. Uh, to be honest kasi gamit siya ng Tongfang. Uh, I guess this one is aluminum ang kanyang top cover sa palm rest area. Pero do I highly recommend ben, my Ben Ben? Ayan. Uh, basahin nyo lagi tong warranty ni my Ben Ben. Kasi medyo kung ito si ito yung maganda yung kanyang bezel ng konti. Uh, slimmer pero may SSD siya so port selection wise ayun yan yung kanyang port selection kay may Ben Ben pala yung M543 so meron tayong security interface RG45, USB 3 micro SD card at least may type C siya which is good for a laptop in this kind of category um hindi ko lang alam dito medyo China certified hanapin lang natin yung ayun 1 gig 
depende sa package nyo which is okay uh, ayun na yung kanyang specs kung gusto nyo more easy so lightweight thinness is 17.7 parang tongfang yung kanyang chassis yun lang yung mapapansin ko dito uh, tongfang may pagka Toshiba yung kanyang touchpad and of course you can also have DDR4 RAM parang DDR3 itsura niya which is kind of funny at least yung keyboard layout niya is good actually I can not complain with it ayan medyo mataas talaga yung performance sa 940mx pero yan no medyo tinamaan niya yung 5200u but like I said Intel Pentium pa rin siya ah uh, nila yung medyo napapansin ko dito gusto sanang tingnan yung ano yun yan uh, USB 2 power port you also have USB 3.0 na dalawa card reader ethernet port na pinaslim pa pero wala syang USB type C which is a downer for a laptop in this kind of price point kumpara kay Dell habang kay Asus kasi ang um, ports nya Hopefully, makita natin. Ayan, security lock, dalawang USB, micro SD card, audio jack, two status LED, HDMI and other setup USB, and USB Type-C with DC power in. Actually, okay lang yung kanyang performance ng mga ganitong laptop is because they have narrow bezel, which is good especially if you're aiming for a laptop that is really quite decent pero yung webcam nya medyo hit and miss kasi dahil yung 0.3 megapixel or 0.6 ang mas bet ko kasi 720p depending on your work medyo okay lang sya pero moving on to the last one which is the Acer Spire 5 that I could recommend kasi 29.99 Magandang specs niya kasi ang pinakamaganda dito is that it uses the 1115G4 na i3. But this is not an ordinary reason why I do recommend this thing. Unang-una sa lahat, yung kanyang spec sheet is very promising. Yes, you have IPS display. Intel XE graphics. Yung Iris XE yung bago. Ele um, yan. 48GB RAM pero gusto nyo ng 8GB RAM that's 31,499 or 35,99 yan yung base model uh, mapapansin nyo guys uh, dual storage 128GB NVMe SSD 1TB hard drive isa lang ang kanya memory slot which is sad uh, you have different option na pwede kayo mag GeForce MX350 pero for a base model like this wala siyang backlit keyboard need to actually get a way higher budget point kung gusto nyo ng backlit keyboard ayan um, papansin nyo it will change on different SKU, different color which is a really great laptop for this kind of category lalo na sa mga USB ports nya I believe this is the port selection hindi ko makita pero security lock slot, USB port combo audio jack status led yan yung kanyang fingerprint scanner Se hindi ko lang alam kung 720p webcam nya uh, this one uses USB type C to use sets of USB ports ethernet, HDMI and DC power in it is a budget laptop uh, meron kasing na-release si Acer na bago that is that is actually based on recycled material plastic gusto kong sabihin sa inyo kung bakit medyo gusto ko rin tong i3 na to is because of its really great performance and this is what it is surprising for Tiger Lake yes, medyo mabalik at actually si Intel sa segment na to so it is a base clock of 3 GHz to 4.1 GHz 6 megs of cache kinda similar to i5 and i7 processor 28 watts 10 nanometer process and it uses Wi-Fi 6 na dito sa generation na to as well as the Intel XE G4 so it is comparable to the 8257U so it is lower than the 30, 1035G7 
Pero mapapansin nyo, tinalo niya ang 10200, 102-10U, pati yung 1035G1, pati yung Ryzen 53550H. So, which is good for a ULB processor, and the XE graphics is kinda similar to being the MX230 counterpart. So, I'm not saying Intel is a bad GPU. Yan, tinalo niya by 10% nung Quad. <laughs> yung Ryzen. Ay, hindi pala Ryzen. Yung MX130. Tapos yung Vega 8. Then, you can see, uh, yung si MX230 is almost there. Pero 5% better si MX3 230. So, I expect to play games like x on low settings, Dota 2 on low settings, 73 FPS on average, 59, y yun lang 1 FPS pag naka negative 1. Medyo error din sila dito, but the expectation here is maganda ang processor na to, lalo na pagdating sa editing kung yun ang gusto nyong gawin which will give you a really great perspective pagdating sa mga games na to so I know it's a little bit longer gusto ko sana i-explain sa inyo kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng mga ganito um, here's the only thing that I could actually give you guys an advice sa mga laptops kasi may mga buyer's guide tayo um, since notebookcheck.net has buyer's guide ito lang yung i-expect ko um, now we are going to the news review pero ayun napapansin nyo may mga laptops din dito na medyo okay medyo great it's way better for you to do research unang una sa lahat pagdating sa buying a laptop is doing research muna kung ano yung very capable sa inyong needs lalo na sa phone mga ganun uh, so far ito yung mga mas magandang option you can watch videos on youtube sa mga types of laptop na pwede nyong kunin which this is quite a long stream pero yun ang mas sabi ko guys so with that being said thank you so much for watching leave a like share it to your friends up and tap on the notification bell to get notified and this is norms and i'll catch you guys in the next episode see you guys next time